Attention! This is an extra video that comes together with the episode number 4 of this series. In the previous video, we constructed the full motor system of the robot. Then, we connected it to a laptop and moved the motors with a simple command. However, that command was not using the encoders to check the actual speed of the motors. The problem is that without the encoder, we cannot know if the wheels are actually moving at the requested speed. To really ensure that the motor moves at the desired speed, we must use the encoders in what is called a closed loop control. By the way, we have created a full course about how to create robots based on ROS2. This course starts from the beginning by designing the structure of the robot, selecting the motors and the sensors and the boards, and then going into the inclusion of the ROS2 controllers to make the robot work with ROS2. We will also teach you on this course how to create the simulation and how to change between simulation and real robot. Check it out because it's a very, very detailed course. The closed loop control works as follows. First, the motor controller asks to the motor to move at a certain speed. Then, the motor starts moving trying to get that speed. Then, the encoder measures the actual speed of the motor. The Arduino code inside the motor controller receives the encoder measure speed. If the measure speed is lower than the desired speed, the Arduino will ask the motor to move faster. If the measure speed is higher than the desired speed, the Arduino will ask the motor to move slower. In our setup, this closed loop control is repeated 30 times per second. That is fast! Now, you understand how a closed loop control works. Excellent! That is an important concept that you will use a lot in robotics. But how does the encoder measure the robot's actual speed? By measuring the rotating ticks. The encoder measures the motor's actual speed by using ticks. Inside the encoder, there is a wheel that rotates together with the motor. That wheel has some gaps in it and a sensor that detects when there is a gap or not. As the wheel rotates, the sensor will indicate when there is a gap and when there is not. Each gap detection is what we call a tick. Each encoder is different. You need to check your manufacturer's documentation to know how many ticks per revolution your encoder has or measure them yourself. This is what we are going to do later in this video. Now, if we know the ticks per revolution, we can calculate how many ticks are needed for a certain speed. For instance, if we want the wheel to rotate at 2 revolutions per second, and we know that the encoder has 2500 ticks per revolution, after a second, the motor controller will expect to have 2 times 2500 equals 5000 ticks. If the motor controller receives less than 5000 ticks, then it means that the motor is moving too slow. If the motor controller receives more than 5,000 ticks, then it means that the motor is moving too fast. Then, accordingly with this computation, the motor controller will change the PMW signal to correct the speed error. But we don't know yet how many ticks to expect from our motors in one revolution. We need to measure that. Let's verify that the encoders are working and then extract some important numbers. First, let's learn how to read the encoder values from the computer. For that, open the serial tool we used in the previous video and connect it to the Arduino. Then, use it to send the command E and see the numbers that appears on the console. Those numbers are the current number of ticks of each motor since you switched them on. Then, send the command R. This resets the ticks to zero. Send the command E again and check that the ticks reported are now zero. Now, move one of the motors with your hand. Send the command E again. You should see a different number of ticks in one of the numbers that appear on the screen. That is the number of ticks that correspond to the wheel that you moved. So now, you understand how the encoders work and how to get their values in the computer. Let's compute the number of ticks per revolution each motor has. We will use the number of ticks in the next video when we create our ROS controller for the robot. To get the number of ticks per revolution for motor 1, reset the encoder with R command. Manually move the motor one revolution. 
Then check the encoder with E command and write the value that you obtain on the paper. Now reset the encoder again with the R command. Repeat by moving the motor for five revolutions. Then check the encoder with the E command and write the value that appears on the screen on a paper. Let's repeat again. Reset the encoder with the R command. Then repeat by moving the motor 10 revolutions. And then check the encoder again with the E command and write the value on the paper. Let's repeat this process also for motor 2. Finally, let's compute the number of ticks per revolution for each motor. For that, let's do an average of the three measurements that we did above. Let's compute the average. The average number of ticks for motor is... So, if we do the math, we finally obtain the following result. Let's verify those numbers by doing an example of motor control. For that, we are going to connect to the motor controller again from the computer and send to it the new command M. The M command specifies the amount of ticks we want the wheel to be producing per each control loop. For example, let's say that we want to spin the motors at two revolutions per second. For that, we need to send the M command to the motor controller with these values. How did I get those numbers? By using the following formula. For motor one, we want it to rotate at two revolutions per second. Each revolution produces 2,476 ticks, and the control loop frequency is 30 hertz. So the final number of ticks per control loop is... And the same applies to the motor too. Then, the final command is... So now, if you launch the serial tool and connect to the Arduino, then you can send the following command. And the wheels should spin at 2 revolutions per second. Awesome! Woo! Excellent! You now have a full motor system with encoders that actually works. However, you may be thinking that this method to control the robot motors is a little bit complex. Do not worry. In the next videos, we will learn how to connect the motors to a computer board and how to make a ROS2 driver that simplifies the control of the motors. So let's go for the homework. Pi 1 Raspberry Pi 4. We are going to use this to control the motor control system instead of using the laptop. Also, remember to buy the power supply for the Raspberry Pi 4 and also an SD card of 64 gigabytes. I will put a link to all these materials on the video description. And the question for this video is, what is a PID controller? We will learn more about this in future videos, but I want to see if you already know about this concept, which is very important for robotics. Can you see if we have already used the PID controller in the video? Where? Let me know on the comments. But the journey doesn't stop here. Check our next video where we are going to learn how to connect the Raspberry Pi to the motor control system. See you there.